This is a place where I think Bible prophecy has a very, very strong connection to all this that's happening with the secret space program, with deep underground military bases, with high above our head military bases, perhaps even uh, you know conquering other realms in terms of planets. Who knows? I mean, I know some of you guys think that they don't exist anymore, but think about that for a second. You know, for those of you who are flat earthers and you know uh, who say that there's no space, think about it for just a second. Wouldn't it be the most powerful way to deceive if the very people that can actually make a difference, that can actually expose this stuff, all start believing in a flat earth again, in a domed, enclosed earth again? And my position has always been, I don't know, man. I don't know if, hey, if we live in a dome, we live in a dome, and all this stuff is a lie. Nevertheless, billions and billions of dollars are being poured into it. Something has to be happening Otherwise, they wouldn't be pouring that much money into it, you know? Uh, so there's got to be development is what I mean. There's got to be infrastructure. There's got to be something that's being built with this money. So that's why I think, you know, to just buy into the flat earth, hook, line, and sinker is to completely omit all of this information, including good research done by Christians like David Flynn and his work. I mean, you buy flat earth, you completely dismiss David Flynn's work. You possibly go with geocentric earth and you have a very strong case about how David Flynn's model of uh, some of the things how heaven reflects on earth um, and, and sort of the design of everything it becomes very compelling and so Uh, yes, something indeed has to be happening. Something must be being built, and there must be some ultimate purpose behind all these secret projects and infrastructure. But it's a gross misconception and a premature conclusion to assume that a wholesale belief in the Flat Earth model, or really any variation of enclosed cosmology, would equate to the dismissal of the realities of these dark projects, or lead people into being deceived by things like the UFO deception, or a planned disclosure, and so forth. If anything, enclosed cosmology points in the very opposite direction, and honestly, to continually hear these kinds of arguments is really just inexcusable at this point, if you ask me. Uh, we're really at the stage of investigation within the biblical flat earth conversation right now where the convergence of things like the space agencies and their well-documented occult roots, uh, such as Jack Parsons and JPL, is just starting to make more and more sense all the time. In biblical cosmology, the planets are not merely you know, fake or holograms or whatever else, but rather they are very real and very much somehow interwoven with the spiritual realm. They really are better understood as spiritual realms instead of physical realms, or at least portals or gateways to various spiritual realms, as opposed to massive orbiting balls of rock or gas, and this absolutely fits in with both the ancient occult approaches to the heavens as well as the increasingly accepted uh, writings of the Book of Enoch within Christian Bible prophecy. And if the Book of Enoch is allowed to be regarded as a valuable resource in regards to everything it says about the Watchers and the Nephilim, and the expanded account of the Antediluvian Age, then why is it simultaneously ignored and mocked in regards to what it plainly describes as the cosmological backdrop of everything that is recorded as pre-flood history? The Genesis 6 narrative carries over into the whole Nimrod chapter and his involvement with the Tower of Babel, which many now agree was probably some kind of pyramid or ziggurat uh, intended as a type of interdimensional portal or stairway into the heavens, uh, which they hope to use to access the celestial dimension, uh, the heavenly realm, the astral plane, whatever you want to call it, uh, where the Fallen Watcher angels originally came from. So the biblical cosmology is 
clearly the same as the Enochian cosmology, and the Enochian cosmology is analogous to the stage which the entire Genesis story plays out. It's the proper setting, the proper lens through which to understand who and what the Watchers were, where they came from, and why every culture and civilization which claimed to have gods that literally came down from the sky, or literally came from the stars. So in this light, it is it is clear as day to then look at the UFO deception as simply a repackaging of the ancient Gnostic narrative, uh, which simply acknowledges the fallen angels as various pantheons of gods, and the Nephilim as demigods. The Gnostic version tells the same story as the Bible and Enoch, but but simply perverts it to paint God as a tyrant and the fallen angels as the heroes and the tragic victims of an unfair creator. So the, the Luciferian dream of a new Atlantis, uh, or a new golden age, ushered in by the return of the fallen ones, is, is really just simply being rebranded, uh, repackaged, and then resold to the uninitiated masses uh, with a scientific materialistic veneer. It's really the same old ancient Gnostic hope presented in a seemingly new way through a different cosmological lens, you know, the lens of a vastly expanding, evolving Copernican universe. Therefore, it's absolutely ludicrous to suggest that a belief in enclosed cosmology, which is biblical cosmology or Enochian cosmology, all the same, that this would negate the possibility of uh, things like genetic manipulation or artificially created host bodies for the spirits of Nephilim or even things like physical craft uh, like flying saucers. It's quite the opposite yet again. It's, it's really another peculiar irony that uh, ufologists have for years speculated about things like the Nazi flying machines and anti-gravity technology and everything, um, which is so often believed to somehow incorporate uh, engines or drives based on electromagnetism and, you know, Tesla technology and things like this. While coincidentally, people exploring the flat earth and alternative cosmologies have been encountering a lot of evidence that, indeed, perhaps in place of the very suspect official theories of physics, uh, such as gravitational theory and, and Newton's alleged laws, it appears that just maybe electromagnetism might actually play a much more central role to the unseen makeup of the cosmos, particularly in relation to the motions of the celestial bodies, which may indeed be far more metaphysical in nature than modern man believes. So, again, indeed, if electromagnetism is, in fact, much closer to a true description of the underlying physical and metaphysical forces which undergird the, the physical and spiritual realms, then is it really difficult to imagine that physical craft, inspired by occult knowledge from fallen angelic beings, could possibly be constructed which operate in accordance with those cosmological forces? Forces which the fallen angels and these evil entities would have had first-hand knowledge of from their original occupations as celestial overseers in the heavens, circling directly above the flat enclosed plane of the earth, within the physical and dimensional confines of the firmament. So, the question that puzzles me is, why is believers in the Bible and students of prophecy, uh, why would we be so skeptical and dismissive of ideas like flat earth as some kind of disinfo or psyop, even though everyone admits that all the ancient Hebrew believers in God held that very position? But then in contrast, we turn around and get into a frenzy over things like allegedly leaked emails from Illuminati insider like Hillary Clinton and all these people talking about UFO disclosure and connections between the Vatican and aliens. I mean, how is it not obvious that these sorts of breadcrumbs uh, totally feed into the decades-long uh, NWO-fueled hysteria regarding aliens and cover-ups and everything else? I mean, the propaganda for the idea that the government has been hiding information about aliens is just ridiculous in scale. It is just massive. But 
the amount of propaganda pushed by the mainstream media regarding Flat Earth? Uh, <laughs> I don't think I've yet seen anything. The Bible itself really is painfully clear in what it says about the angels, the firmament, the heavens, and so on. I mean, the first chapter of the first book in the Bible makes it honestly impossible to cling to any sort of Copernican universe. In no disrespect to the late David Flynn, but I'm sorry, if the Bible says what it says, then honestly, who cares what Isaac Newton wrote about in regards to the dimensions of the temples of Jerusalem and how it might serve as some kind of codex to the dimensions of time and space and you know, all of which is a theory that is completely assumptive on the heliocentric model, of course. And regardless of whether Flynn was right or wrong about various things, he clearly was an avid researcher and a brilliant guy, uh, genuine in his attention, so it's, it's no attack on him personally. But at the end of the day, do we regard the works of men like Flynn higher than the plain and simple words of scripture? Not only this, but the fact that his entire theory uh, in Temple at the Center of Time was inspired by Newton's writings uh, honestly should alarm us, uh, especially when we stop and consider that Newton himself was not actually the devout Christian that mainstream history tends to portray him as, but rather he was also a student of many occult uh, manuscripts and philosophies, including uh, the Kabbalah, and we clearly see this having an influence upon him with the example of his rather esoteric approaches to Bible prophecy, as in these obsessions with the dimensions of the temple, or, you know, figuring out the length of a, the true length of a cubit, and somehow those serving as a, as a key to unlocking deeper meanings of prophecies, like in Daniel. I mean, this is very sadly occultic and esoteric thinking, I mean, very plainly. And uh, we should be really cautious with that. I mean, ultimately, the Bible is the authority, and it's, it's the baseline. And there's lots of different ways to impose pet theories and ideas upon it, whether they are slightly Gnostic and occultic in nature, or um, cosmological, as in imposing Copernican paradigms and, and these things upon Genesis itself. And similarly, if the Book of Enoch is being promoted in any way, and being regarded by many people now as having you know, a certain measure of authenticity or accuracy in its description of, of the pre-flood events, then it must, too, must be fully evaluated in all that it says, not just piecemeal. When you do this, you can easily see that the UFO deception and disclosure narrative unfolding today is absolutely part of the final chapter in a very ancient saga of deception and conflict between the fallen ones against God and against mankind.